Too many people are worried about life after death. I think that question is ludicrous. I think the real question is, is there life after birth? I'm a natural from Earth. I like to volunteer teaching music theory. Basically, I think of myself as a self-taught uh, art teacher. I've landed <clears throat> in the last 10 years basically in the music field because that seems to be the one art form that is losing its art. I was born in the middle of World War II in Chicago. I would stand in front of the TV and conduct the, or conduct the television and dance and sing and I got really good at memorizing songs. So my mother decided that at a fairly early age she would try me out on a musical instrument. From the time I was about four and a half years old, and I played French horn and got pretty good at it. I turned out to be a bit of a child prodigy. My grandmother decided to take me down to this uh, television station one afternoon, and I auditioned for the local version of The Little Rascals, and because I looked like Spanky and because I could sing and dance, I got the job. And then I wound up being on television every week, singing and dancing. And at age 12, I had my first nervous breakdown. There was a kid in school named Ralph, who was my nemesis. And Ralph uh, was a bully and picked on me a lot. Uh, I was emotionally sensitive, I was talented, I was everything Ralph wasn't. So one day I'm at my psychiatrist in the playroom, having a good time playing, and all of a sudden in comes Ralph. I remember very distinctly going over into one of the corners of the room and crouching into a fetal position and staring out the window and started sucking on my thumb and that was the first time I actually felt my mind split. Found a doctor who was really good at helping me get back into my music and calm me down without the pressure. He decided that my brain can only handle so much pressure. Everybody's brain is like a dam holding back huge forces. And uh, I was born with a dam with a thinner wall that has crack in it. I found that I was falling asleep at work a lot, or I'd go into the Faraday cage to work on something and would fall asleep. And it wasn't just that I was bored, but there was something wrong. My boss put a lot of pressure on me and pushed me harder than he should have. And I wound up, my brain snapped, and I had another nervous breakdown. I wound up in a mental hospital that time, Alexian Brothers Hospital. Oh my God, it was like going back to the 12th century. It was the worst hospital I've ever seen in my life. Literally, instead of doctors, they had monks in burlap, brown burlap, <laughs> robes walking around the corridors. The worst thing that ever happened to me in my life. Not everybody is the survival of the fittest alpha ape, okay? We can't hide our crazies away and medicate them. We, we need to bring those people right out here and enjoy their mental breakdown. <laughs> and you know, and when they go completely bonkers, uh, be there for them and party with the craziness when it's, when it's there. We don't want the things that are the flaws in our nature to be out in front of our face. And I think that if you want those people to have a good quality life and to feel decent about themselves, they have to be out in society. And only society as a whole, treating them properly, can help get them back on track. You know, when I would start going crazy, and I'd say to them, you know, I'm about to have a nervous breakdown, and people just smile and go, yeah, okay. And then I'd go have a nervous breakdown, you know. When any one of those people could have helped take the pressure off, come over and put their arm around me and say, look, if you want to go nuts, you go right ahead. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be right here when you come back. That would be nice. I don't see that. I need to learn how to hug myself. I need to learn how to stand up and be my own hero. 
yeah, I can't work a job nine to five like everybody else, but guess what? When I think well, and I can bring things to the society that this society needs. And now here I am, 65 years old, and it's only in the last 10 years that I've learned to deal with myself. And I decided that I would try to keep myself busy by constantly learning new things. So I kind of looked around in my head and said, what's the one thing that's been consistent through my whole life that I really have a strong passion for? It turned out to be music. When a person plays music beautifully, the people who listen are patients who are having their soul cured by the doctor of music. It's, a, it's, a, it's holy. And that is missing from the way we teach art. The responsibility I have as an artist to open myself up to what's here. But when I'm performing it, if I don't give myself over to the music as well and let me disappear and let the music appear, then there's no healing. It's, there's no, that connection's not there. And we're connecting on a very deep, human, spiritual level. It's like life force itself. It's what life is. It's a privilege to be able to step out of yourself and give yourself over to something like that and let that miracle just come forward and happen. You know, I carry a lot of suicidal feelings. I have problems with dealing with my consciousness. But the one thing I know is I want to live. I want to be here now, and I want to know I'm here now, and I want to feel it. And I want everybody to dance and sing. Being part of a society means we have to be masochistic. There are things, impulses we have to pull back from that we can't have. But what we need to do is just realize the most important thing is just to be. It's just that simple. Can I live my life after I'm born? And just be so damn grateful that I'm alive. Because life itself is the greatest gift we have. It's the most valuable thing there is.